Okay, so we're going to continue with this series of uh, uh, engineering economics videos. Uh, the next thing that we're going to talk about is how to apply economics to evaluate alternatives. And I'm going to, we're going to look at four different, uh, different approaches to doing so. Uh, one is called net present worth, uh, benefit cost ratio, equivalent uniform annual worth, and uh, the rate of return. Uh, now, uh, just make a note to yourself, uh, the first two are best when the alternatives uh, have equal design lives, and you'll see why that is in a minute. Uh, uh, number three and four um, can be used um, with any combination of design lives. Uh, number four is best if you're not sure about the interest rate, uh, which may be the case sometimes. So let's, let's do some problems. So we have three uh, alternative highway improvements to consider, let's say. Uh, and so number one, two, and three. And uh, we have uh, costs, construction costs for each. And then these savings are the savings due to the improvement. So uh, this, this $5,000 is the uh, savings in accidents or crashes that don't occur because we built this alternative number one. So this is a benefit over, uh, kind of a differential benefit over not doing anything. Same for the travel time costs and the operating costs. Um, and this, these maintenance costs are, are associated, costs associated with, the, uh, with, with each alternative. Okay, so putting it in its standard form, we're given the interest rate and we're given a uh, number of years, number of periods, and we want to know which alternative to use. So let's use the, um, the net present worth approach. So in this approach, for each alternative, we'll convert everything to present value, add them up, and the highest present value is the one that, uh, that wins. So for the first, uh, first alternative, we have, uh, and I'll put the money uh, in thousands of dollars, so we have a cost which is negative of $185,000. Okay. And then we have a series of yearly costs or benefits. So we have yearly benefits of 5,000 plus 3,000 plus a half a thousand. All right, those are the yearly benefits. And then we have a yearly cost, so it's negative, of 1.5,000. And these are all yearly, so we'll convert those to present value. And this comes out to minus 4.9. So the net present worth, the benefits minus the costs of this alternative one are minus $4,900,000. So let's take a look at uh, number two. Number two, the present worth of the costs, initial costs are $220,000 happens during the first year. And then the, uh, the benefits, again, 5,000 plus 6,500 plus 500. And then um, subtracting out the, uh, the yearly costs of 2.5 thousand. Again, we'll use the, um, the P given A formula. P given A times A, which these are, gives a P. Right? So, this is equal to plus 24.4 thousands. And then the, the last, the last uh, uh, alternative is a, a cost of minus 310,000. And then the present worth of these benefits and this cost. Again, same, same thing. So it's this plus this gives this plus 19.3. So the alternative that's the best investment using net present worth is alternative two. We net a, a positive $24,000. Okay, now we could use benefit cost because these are all the same design life, 50 years. So we could use uh, what's called a benefit cost ratio uh, we need to keep in mind that the, in this case, the, the, this is pretty straightforward. The, the, the benefits are the differential benefits. This, this $5,000 is, 
is the difference in accident costs between building this alternative and doing nothing. So it's the benefits of this minus the minus the costs of of um, of, of the um, you know do nothing alternative. Okay. So we need to find the net present or the the present worth of the benefits, the present worth of the costs, and do a do a, a, a ratio. So the net pre the net benefits are these five thousand plus three thousand plus five hundred. 218, and the, the, the net costs are 185 minus the present worth of this, this cost. And if we plug those into the benefit cost, it's just a ratio of the benefits to the costs, 0.98. It's less than one, so that's not a good thing right away. Uh, if we did the same thing with the second alternative, we would have the net benefits would be the present worth of these three, and the net cost would be this and this, present worth of this. And that, that comes out to 1.09. And then the last one, again, the benefits of the, the present worth of these three, and the costs are this and the present worth of this, 1.05. So, you can see using this method it's consistent with the other method this is the highest return for the cost for the investment now if we wanted to take out the if we weren't sure about the interest rate we could use this rate of return method in which case we would set up a net present worth equation but leave the uh, I value as a variable and set this equal to zero. So the net present worth is zero. What's the rate of return that would give that? Well, for this one, it's 2.9%, which is less than the 3% from before, which makes sense. Um, this one's 3.6, and this one's 3.3. Uh, Solving for I now, you know, on an exam with a, with a lousy calculator on the FE, you probably won't have a rate of return problem like this, although you may be asked about it. Okay, but anyway, the, the best investment is, is this one because it's the highest rate of return. So I, I set up the net present worth, keeping I as a variable, setting it equal to zero, so this equation is equal to zero, and then I solve for I. That's the rate of return method. So now let's let's take a look at a different problem that has uh, two alternatives with different lives. So we have two production units. Uh, the interest rate rate of return is 12 percent, and we have the design live salvage value. That's the value after the the the, the life is done, uh, and then the annual operating costs for each. So now we would not use net present worth, we would not use benefit costs, and we're given an interest rate, so we would not use rate of return. So the only uh, one that's left is um, the equivalent annual cost. So if we convert everything to annual costs and compare those uh, with different design lives, that's the one we have to use. So the annual cost for the first unit, okay, the annualized cost, so here's a present worth of, or the present cost of that alternative. If I convert that to an annualized cost over eight years, and the future value of the salvage, the salvage value here is $2,000, it's a plus, that's a future value. What's the annualized value of that? A over F times F. And then the annual operating cost is a negative, it's a cost, but it's annual, so there's no conversion. And if I plug in the 12% in eight years, I come out with minus $5,000. Now let's take a look at uh, alternative B. This is the annual cost for B. Again, the present 
cost is $30,000. That's the present value. We want to annualize that. And then the uh, future value of this after 15 years will be 5000 That's a plus. But it's a future value, so I'm going to multiply this future value times A over F to get A. And then $1,000 is a cost and it's an annual cost so we don't have to make any conversion so again we plug in 12 percent 15 years and come out with a minus 5270 so the annual cost of unit a is 5000 the annual cost of unit b is 5200 so of course a is the best one or a is the one that we would choose So there are a couple of other things that you may run across that, that you, you may find useful uh, and I wanted to talk about. First, sometimes you may, you may make an investment and borrow the money without having to start paying anything for a couple of years, right, or a few years. Um, and so that means we're beginning a series of payments at a period other than the first one. So let's say we take out a loan and we want to start paying equal payments after the fourth year for 20 years or something you know how would that work out what would be the what would be the conversion from annual cost to present worth and so forth and the other the other thing we're often interested in is um, you know sometimes we'll make uh, growing payments as we as we go along maybe we're more able to make higher payments uh, and you know how's that how's that look so we're gonna, we're gonna I'm gonna look at that as well so the basic formula is P over F is this capital recovery factor. Um, I'm sorry, that's the compound interest formula. So we want a, a loan with N payments where the first starts at period B, right? Instead of one, it's, a, it's B, it's a variable now. So we're gonna go through that same setup that we did before. Remember, uh, the present value is the sum of all the present values of all the future payments. So A is the, uh, is the equal series of equal payments, and we start with the B period and go up to the nth period. And so we can set up a summation just like we did before. And again, if you go on to um, Wolfram or something like that, you can get the, uh, the closed form of this summation is this. So this is the formula that you would use if you were given, you wanted to start with uh, period 4, for example, B would be equal to 4, and then you could just go for it and use P over A, just like you did before, except the formula is a little different. Okay, so that's A. Now, the other, the other um, little principle that that, that uh, might you might you might run across is um, if if we're um, if we're doing unequal uh, sequence of payments where A grows at some rate, again we can do the same setup except now this this A is growing at a rate of G percent. And if we lay this out and, and get the closed form formula, we have a P over A, just like before, except now we have I and G and N in there. Okay, I'm going to end it there. And the next video will be uh, depreciation.